All right, this is chapter nine, section two. It's reflections. Our learning objective, which should land on all of your notes, um, is to find reflection images of figures. So a reflection is a kind of transformation. Um, a reflection across line M is called the, uh, called the line of reflection is a translation. And the following properties that it has, if a point A is on the line M, then the image of A, the image of A is itself, so A prime is equal to A. If point B is not on the line, then it is perpendicular to the line between B and B prime. That's fun. You write the reflection across M that P takes to P prime is R for reflection, M is for the little line, and then P represents the point P, and that's equal to P prime. So this is the a formatting issue. This is the way Pearson's going to format reflections for you. I must be, I must have due diligence in this process. Not everyone refers to reflections in this manner, but this is the way your textbook does. So you may, I, out in the wild, you may see a reflection in a slightly different format. Um, don't, don't be shocked. Essentially, what they want you to know, you don't have to write this down, but I, I thought it really displayed um, the, the meat and potatoes of this section for you. When you reflect a figure across the line, each point of the figure maps to another point the same distance from the line, but on the other side. The orientation of the figure reverses. So it's like you're my mirror. My mirror's staring back at me. Oh, my <laughs> so it's a reflection. So I, I consider it as a mirror, by the way. Okay. So if the way that looks is if I have a point and so if if we take a look at this grid right here, I want to reflect point P across the line X equals one. This requires you to dig deep back into the section we were doing with lines and remember that x the line x equals one is this line right here it's the vertical line at x equals one we're going to reflect point p across the line x equals one so p prime we look at p's right here he is two units away from x equals 1. So we're going to go on the other side of x equals 1, 2 units, and that's where my p is, p prime is going to live. So the reflection, this is this one right here, this is the got it, number 1. Reflection across x equals 1 of point p, the coordinates of p prime are Negative one, four. All right. In problem, the got it number two, we are going to graph triangle ABC from problem number two, which is why I copied problem number two here and label their reflection across the x-axis of triangle ABC. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little graph. Okay, so I'm just copying down the coordinates from A, B, and C. And then I'm going to reflect across the x-axis. So let me highlight the x-axis here. It is this guy. Here's the x-axis. So whatever distance B is from the x-axis, 
we are going to replicate that, and that's going to be B prime. So B prime is going to be at negative 1, 0. C prime is 2 units from the x-axis, so I'm going to go 2 units here. And C prime is going to be at negative forward, comma, negative 2. And then A prime, well, if A is 4 units from the x-axis, I'm going to replicate that down here. And A prime is going to be 4 units. So A prime is at negative 3 comma negative 4. And I'm going to change my C because it's actually at 4 negative 2. Positive 4 still. I wrote that wrong. So <laughs> let me modify. B is at 0, negative 1. I have my X and my Y's mixed up. So 0, negative 1. Alright, so let's take a look at problem 3, writing a reflection rule. Um, each triangle in the diagram is a reflection of another triangle across one of the given lines. The first initial question they give us is, how can you describe triangle 2 just this one right here, by using a reflection rule. So we can say triangle 2 is the image of reflection, so find the pre-image and a line of reflection to write a rule. So we need a line of reflection and we need a pre-image. The pre-image can't be triangle 3 because it is not flipped. Check triangles 1 and triangle 4. So triangle 1, if I were to fold it along line K, it wouldn't match up with triangle 2. If I were to fold it along or line M, it would not match up with 1, so that doesn't work. But look at 2 and 4 here. If I were to fold this in half, these little points would line up, this right angle, would this right angle line up? With this right angle? Hmm. Um, so they drew a little line segment here to see would they line up. And they decide line K is perpendicular bisectors of the segments joining triangle 2 and triangle 4. So triangle 2 is a reflection about line K for triangle 4. Okay, now let's use find a reflection rule to describe triangle 1. So who's buddies with triangle 1? Triangle 3. And he is reflected about line M. So we say, using this as our format, we say triangle 1 is equal to the reflection across line M of triangle 3. All right, last one. Pretty sure this is the last one. So can we use properties of reflections to prove that GHJ is an equilateral triangle, GHJ. Well, to be equilateral, I would need this side congruent to this side, congruent to this side. I need all my sides congruent. And currently, the only, what is the only side I know for sure that's congruent? Yeah, GD is the only only information I know. Um, so, it is uh, not possible to prove that triangle GHJ is equilateral since we can't prove that HJ is equal to HG or HJ is equal to DJ. We just don't have enough 